We've talked about different psychological approaches to behavior. For instance, we've talked about the psychoanalytical perspective based on Freudian theory, the idea that um, sexuality is a huge part of personality development. We've talked about the id, the ego, the superego, and stages of psychosexual development. All that is a psychoanalytical approach. We've talked about behaviorism in the past, too. We, when we spoke about learning theory, we talked about um, learning as a function of the consequences of our actions. We talked about classical conditioning. And those, too, provide an approach to understanding behavior. And that's a behaviorist approach. A cognitive approach you'll read about in your textbook is basically the idea that our cognitive patterns, our thinking patterns, influence behavior, and that if you change a person's cognitive patterns, then you can change behavior. This is a form of therapy, in fact. We've talked about the humanistic approach. I want you to know about Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers. And you'll read in your textbook about a sociocultural approach, which obviously emphasizes the role <clears throat> of the social environment and the cultural environment. You'll also read about the trade approach, the idea that many psychologists will test, conduct psychological tests to assess different traits and assume that that is a basic part of human personality. And then finally, there's a biological approach. You have many psychologists today who will suggest, I'm one of them, that you need to have a basic understanding of biological factors to be able to understand behavior. So these are all different approaches to understanding personality or understanding behavior. And most psychologists today are trained in one of these perspectives. Um, sometimes more than one. I was a biopsychologist PhD with a, an emphasis on learning theory. Other people have been trained with other approaches. And your training and your theoretical approach will influence how you understand behavior, how you explain it, and the nature of the research that you do. On the other hand, I think most psychologists today would suggest that they're somewhat eclectic. And by that word, I mean that we tend to draw from different theoretical perspectives, that even though perhaps I'm a biopsychologist, I will also use sociocultural factors to help explain behavior. We tend to draw the best from all these different approaches when they're applicable. In order to prepare for your quiz on personality theory, I want you to be able to look at a case study and then explain an individual's behavior from all these different psychological perspectives. So I'm going to describe a case study for you for a hypothetical individual named Johnny. And I want you to then be able to take each of these psychological approaches, psychoanalytic, behaviorist, and so on, and provide an explanation of Johnny's behavior and his situation from that perspective. So here's the story of Johnny. Johnny, as a very young child, was considered chubby by many adults. When he was taken to the doctor, the doctor thought that he was overweight and mentioned it to his mother, but she thought that she just had a very healthy boy who was heavier than many of his peers, and felt she felt a little defensive when the physician said that. So Johnny, in his early school years, was a very quiet and shy child. He had difficulty making friends. He tended to spend his time just at home, sitting on the couch, eating potato chips and watching television or playing video games. However, when he got to high school, his weight served him well because he was part of the football team. And as a function of those activities, he started making many more friends. He had places to go on weekends where he could socialize. But unfortunately, he experienced an injury playing football, which 
caused him to stop socializing and kind of retreat to his home again. As an adult, Johnny was able to graduate from college. He went out and he got a, a good job, but he really didn't exercise much and his weight continued to be pretty high. And one day when he was walking home from work, he saw some friends from high school and they were playing basketball and they invited him to join him. But he experienced some physical problems while he was playing basketball and he had to stop. His heart began racing and he was out of breath and he just really felt that he was in some serious trouble. Then he stopped trying to engage in those kinds of, of exercise and activities. Later, he developed renal problems and heart disease, and poor Johnny actually died an early death as a result of those things. I'm sorry I made you sad, um, but here's it's not a real person. Here's Johnny. He, you know a little bit about his life, and so what I want you to do is try to understand Johnny's situation from these various psychological perspectives. If you take the psychoanalytic perspective, how do you explain behavior based on Freudian theory? I imagine you're going to think of the oral stage and suggest that Johnny was fixated in the oral stage of psychosexual development, for instance. If you are a behaviorist, using a behaviorist perspective. How do you explain Johnny's situation or how do you understand any aspects of his behavior? Well, he was reinforced as a child for eating more than most children and for having a weight that was higher than was typical of other children his age. Um, cognitive psychology, how does a cognitive psychologist approach Johnny's case study? Well, he has thought patterns that influence his behavior perhaps thought patterns that indicate that eating larger quantities of food is normal, um, that he's not full until he eats a certain amount at each meal, thought patterns that he cannot engage in exercise, that it will harm him if he does so. Of course, a cognitive psychologist would work on changing those thought patterns in hope of changing behavior. Now, what about a humanistic psychologist? Well, therapy in Rogerian approach would be to just let Johnny have a place where he's not being judged and he would examine his own feelings and thoughts and behavior and be self-actualizing and probably as a function of that would lose weight and improve his lifestyle. If you look at Johnny's behavior from a perspective presented by Abraham Maslow, then you look at the types of needs that are being fulfilled or not being fulfilled. Then you could take a sociocultural perspective. Here you're looking at the social environment and his culture and the those influences on his behavior. Um, his social environment included a mother, I hate blaming the mother, but that's the case in this case study, um, that she encouraged him to eat more than the norm and that his social environment influenced his behavior. Or maybe in his household it was um, a cultural norm for a person's weight to be a bit higher. Then there's trait theory. And if you're a trait theorist in psychology, you believe that people are born with certain traits and that those are unchanging throughout the lifespan and that they can be assessed through quantitative or qualitative methods. And perhaps Johnny was introverted rather than extroverted and that that influenced his behavior. Finally, we might take a biological perspective and look at the possibility that Johnny inherited a, a genetic tendency to gain weight easily. And these are just, just brief explanations of behavior from these different theoretical perspectives. But I want you to be able to just take each approach, look at the same behavior, and come up with different explanations of it.
and this will help you perform well on your personality quiz.